who we got with us this morning? Patricia can Smith. You, can you tell us about yourself, Miss Patricia? Okay, my name is Patricia Smith. I'm from Kenlock, Missouri. Um, I'm 58 years old. I was raised by my mom and dad in a small town, Kenlock. And um, my, it's, I'm, I'm the youngest of 11. Um, my mom sent us, sent all of us to Catholic school. No, she gambled and sent us all to Catholic school. Um, let me see what else. How was it growing up in Kenlock um, as a little girl back then as opposed to how you see Kenlock now? What's the differences in your opinion? Mm, family orientated. Um... We were like, when the lights go out, you go in. Uh, the neighbors can whoop you. <laughs> um, A village. Yes. When did you start seeing that change? Um, in the 90s, when the crack hit. Yep. Was your family affected by that ep epidemic when it hit? Yes. Yes, we were hit hard. What schools did you go to growing up? I went to St. Anne in Normandy, and I went to Holy Cross in Baton. Graduated, I'm sure. No, I didn't graduate. I got my GED. However, I went to SLU, St. Louis University. And, um, yes, I did. <laughs> what did you study at SLU? Business administration. Yeah. Tell us how it was growing up, the youngest of 11. Like, how was that? It was like I got everything I wanted. So you grew up spoiled and entitled. I was Brett, right. Entitlement issues. See, mm -hmm. Brett, look, Brett nowadays is entitled. Entitled. Mm -hmm. You know, back then you say you spoiled and you're Brett. Now I say you're entitled. How did that affect you growing up? Uh, it really hindered me. Yeah, it hindered me in ways um, where I wasn't taking a look at myself for real. No accountability. Mm hmm Because everybody comes to the aid of the baby. Right. I was a spoiled brat. I had a cabin on the side of the house. How did you how did you come across a cabin? Like what how did that come about where you were able to live outside of the house? Because that was unheard of. I uh, no, back then. Yes. But we had everything. Because my granddad was the judge. Come on. Tell us about your granddad. Mm -hmm. Well, he was the judge. And um What year are we talking? <laughs> Let me see. In the sixties, seventies? How long was he a judge? Oh my God, now that I do not know. Now, I don't even know that. What was his influence on your life? Um, he, we didn't have a lot of contact. He mainly had contact with my mom. Was there a reason for that? Uh, I think a lot of that had to do with her gambling. Yeah. And, and well, I guess I can talk about everything now because Everybody dead and gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, another, um, speaking on it, another epidemic that hit us that we don't really speak of was the boat. Mm -hmm. the, the boat kind of disrupted a lot of lives and a lot of families. And we talk about the drugs, but the boat was just as bad because a lot of our parents and grandparents and uncles, they developed gambling problems that affected their livelihoods on down the line. Um, out of your 11 brothers and sisters, what's your relationships like with them? What's your relationships like with your brothers and sisters? I, I was just sitting thinking about something. I, um, how is it now or was it then? Then and now. Well, then, uh, we were close. I, okay, I had a sister that stayed in New York 
No, she stayed in New Jersey. We, we used to go to New York all the time. And I used to go up there. You know, we were real, real close. Me and my uh, sister. Me and my sisters. And my brothers, we, yeah, we were close. We were really family orientated. We ate at home. <laughs> we ate dinner. I mean, you know, we ate dinners. We ate Say grace. Lunches. Yeah. What changed? What changed the family dynamic, in your opinion? With your, the drugs. With, with you guys, were you the only one affected with the with the drugs, or was it more? I had four other brothers that was affected. Mm -hmm. And they were affected as well. With selling and using. Is that how you got introduced? Mm hmm But I got introduced to using with my daughter's dad. Mm -hmm. And that broke us up, me and the daughter dad, because he were he was more out there than I was. But you would think not, but but it was like that. He was functioning. No, I was. He, he was, was functioning. Okay. Yeah. So that started the roller coaster. Mm-hmm. And what's been going on since then? Well, I said like 10 years after mine, at 32, let me see, that was 19 when I had my daughter. So at like 32, I met my husband. And um, I was with him ever since up until now. Mm -hmm. and you guys are still together? No, we're divorced. You know, I went to prison. What brought that about? When I was out there using, I was stealing. And I got... Um, Boosting, as they call it. Right. <laughs> Shoplifting. I have so many names. Um, when I... Well, anyway, I had cases like that. To, to go to prison for boosting means you had to have a lot of cases because they pretty lenient on boosting. Like they, you don't get, you don't really get jail time for boosting unless it's like a stockpile of cases. And like, you just keep coming through there, keep coming through there, whatever. But what was the, rela not relationship, but what was the experience like when you did get incarcerated and how long were you incarcerated? Man, on and off for like 20 years. And I went to Illinois prison because I was still in Illinois. I was still in different states. So you were in, okay. So you went to Logan? Mm -hmm. No, I went to Dwight. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the experience like? On and off for 20 years, like, when did you get tired of the roller coaster? Mm. It was like 2010. That's when I had got out, and um, well, I was going back and forth because I was breaking my probation and parole. Doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. When was the last time that you went, and when did the light come on that you know what I'm tired of this? Um. I say like 2015, no, 2000, 2009, no, 2010, 11, somewhere around there, I gave it up and. Um, what replaced it? I was in slew. I was clean then. Then my mother died in 2014. And I relapsed. And you've been relapsed ever since? On and off. Is treatment in the plans anytime soon, or you kind of yes. going to do it on your own? Yes. No, I plan to go to treatment, detox soon. Mm -hmm. How long does that process take? Well, now that it's fentanyl, it's probably going to take a while. Because it takes a while for your body to get back right. Not only do you gotta get the drugs out, 
the after effects of having the drugs. Have you ever tried to clean yourself up from the fentanyl? Yes, and I couldn't do it by myself. It's just totally impossible. I can't breathe. I threw up. I mean, it's just all, oh, it's, it's, it's well, crazy. The fentanyl withdrawals are worse than heroin. Can ever get. What would be your advice to somebody who's thinking about dabbling in heroin and fentanyl and any other illicit substances? What would your advice be to them who's thinking about it or who's trying to do it on a recreational basis and think they can't get hooked? You said, what's my advice? What would be your advice on somebody who's flirting with it and using it on a recreational basis, thinking that they're not going to get hooked? What would you tell them who thinking about where they're using it on a recreational basis, thinking that they won't get hooked? What would you tell them? Please don't. I'm real sleepy. I, I, I'm sleepy because I've been up all night. And, um. Well, if there's anything you want to say in closing we, um, to anybody or you want to get off your chest, you could say it right now in closing. I want to say this do not use the fentanyl. If you can find heroin, please use that. Do not use the fentanyl. Fentanyl is not for human consumption at all. And. It, it, it's, it, the clock is winding down. Uh, it's real soon that I'm, I'll be going to uh, detox. I have to. I know for me, and a lot of other people are saying it too. You have to do detox. You can't not do it by yourself. It did mentally. You need someone because it, it takes you on an emotional roller coaster. We appreciate you taking time out with us, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you.